Latin America faces a worrying increase in cancer incidence, and unless something is done to prevent the disease and to improve healthcare systems, it faces a burgeoning epidemic. So says a study produced today in The Lancet Oncology. I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Dr. Paul Goss, who as well as being professor at Harvard Medical School, is one of the lead authors of the report. Dr. Goss, welcome. And what were you hoping to gain from the commission? We have launched, I think, the first and unique report of cancer control in the region of 47 countries comprising Latin America and the Caribbean. And it, this effort was led by 71 selected oncologists, health economists, epidemiologists, radiologists, pathologists, advocates, all types of people that are in the cancer control world. But it's a grassroots kind of report, if you like, and the first one of its nature. And our team, our international cancer team here at MGH led this initiative, and we were supported strongly by the editorial team of the Lancet Oncology from London. Our goal in writing this commission and putting it together with all these people was to really draw attention of local authorities and local healthcare personnel in the region to the burgeoning cancer burden that's confronting Latin America. Um, there's a tidal wave, if you like, of cancer problem occurring on the continent, and we want people to be aware of that and to take action to avert what could be a disastrous, catastrophic situation. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges facing Latin America and the Caribbean when it comes to fighting cancer? In terms of the cancer burden that's coming, that confronts Latin America and Caribbean, there's an aging population that by 2020, there'll be over 100 million people, 60 years of age or older, out of 590 million currently in the region. At least 54% of the population have very little, if any, healthcare coverage. The systems are geared predominantly toward the educated, urban, wealthy minority, and the very substantial majority of people are disenfranchised, as I said, 54% without healthcare coverage. Um, there are, there are, the mortality rate in the region for every kind of cancer comes to about 50% higher than in the United States and Western Europe. So there's a problem with what we call the mortality to incidence ratio, which is much higher in Latin America. And then their healthcare system has been reactive to the sickest patients with stage four advanced cancer. And so those are the patients that by being hospitalized at, toward the end of their lives, consume the majority of the financial resources that are available. So there's a downward spiraling effect where the Advanced cancers are increasing because of the structural problems that I've alluded to, and the economies are spending their limited resources supporting those patients. And there, there is a way that we've tried to point out in this commission where that trend of a downward spiral in finances and, and, and burdening, burge, burgeoning cancer, uh, stage four cancer, can be arrested and reversed. What actions need to be taken to uh, stop existing healthcare systems being overwhelmed by treating cancer in the future? There's some immediate steps that could be taken even within the constraints of the current resources. First of all, there's an urgent need to move increasingly towards universal healthcare coverage with 54% of all the people, 300 and something million people, without adequate or any health insurance at all. There's a great need for policymakers to shift towards redistribution of their budgets towards uh, disenfranchised populations, and they include urban poor, rural people, remote people, indigenous people. So there are many subpopulations within the continent that are disenfranchised from health care in the first place. A movement toward prevention and addressing and confronting the three top ones, which are you know, tobacco and smoke, about 150 million smokers in the region about uh, uh, close to 100 million people are also exposed to smoke indoors from cooking and from cooking fires. Infectious causes of cancer like hepatitis B virus, uh, HPV virus, etc. immunization programs could be immediately implemented. All of these steps, environmental carcinogenesis, all of these steps will work towards reducing the number of patients that appear with cancer. What are some of the key messages that you would like doctors, policymakers, and governments to take away from the commission? It's a commission of 47 distinct countries, each one of which has different healthcare systems, different geographic, socioeconomic, population distribution, infectious agents, type of cancer, type of economy 
booming economies versus stagnant and declining economies. So there's a great variation in the challenges faced by Latin American and Caribbean countries. However, if you think that the United States spends 17 times more per cancer patient than the best country in South America and Latin America, it shows you the, ex the magnitude of the problem. So there is an urgent need for ministries to recognize that the whole cancer control system is underfunded, grossly underfunded. And I think if they allocate a slightly bigger percentage of the total healthcare budget and of total GDP towards cancer control, it will be a very uh, wise, proactive step to take to prevent what could be a tidal wave of cancer burden in the next two decades. And so resourcing it slightly better and then a reallocation to all those disenfranchised populations such as urban poor, such as indigenous people and remote and rural people and just making them the system more equitable with a more universal access type system. Those are steps that could be taken immediately with very little change in the budgets. So small changes would make big effect. And one other step would be to move the emphasis away from treating the most sick patients with the most resources and consuming all the resources at the end of the problem, if you like, and really moving it up front. Immunizing teenage girls in school against HPV, making sure people are properly immunized, addressing rural and environmental and industrial carcinogenesis, addressing all the tobacco control and smoke control issues. All of these things will have an immediate effect. Within the next 10 years, there'll be a sharp reduction in the mortality and in the incidence of cancer, and that's where they need to head.